We thank you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit, for your power, for your sweet Holy Spirit upon us that give us strength, taking us through another day. Here we are, Lord, in your presence, heeding your call that you have given us. You have inspired me, Lord God, to do this. And here I am. I'm coming to you for guidance, for inspiration, for your touch, and for your Holy Spirit to engulf us right now, that we will be able to impart what you have, you know, drop into our spirit, into our mind, into our skills, into our ability. And, oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for those out there in Cyberland who are tuning in, who are checking in, and those who are tuning in, we thank you for them. Facebook fans, our Google, our Twitter, Instagram, we all social media, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for those who visit the website, who listen to the pre-recording, and who you know, just just supporting this venture. Lord, we thank you. We ask for your blessing. We ask for your grace. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your Holy Spirit to engulf us. And I pray, Lord God, for our Facebook fan. We are on Facebook Live now, and I thank you for Facebook, that we can have this medium where we can portray our skills and portray, oh God, and try to use our skills to reach someone for you through the power of music and media and, and social media and electronics. Lord, you tell us in your word that, you know, greater things we're going to do. We Right now we're here in New York City and we can reach millions around the world just from this one spot that we are. That we are. And that's a great thing. Father, thank you for everything that has been done. Thank you, Lord God, for the for those on Facebook who tuning in and sharing. Bless them, Lord. We ask that you bless their household. Bless them, Lord God. Give them the desire of their heart. And we ask for your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name. Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor as we praise you as the blessing come down. In Jesus' name. And we're gonna, I'm going to see our signature scripture is taken from St. Matthew 6 and verse 33, and it goes like this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. What it's really saying is seek God first and his way of doing things, and then everything will be all right. Or everything will add it to you. And my motto is, I'm a marked man, marked with the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm a marked man, marked with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I want to say thank everyone who tuning in right now. And we are going to get into the, to go to get into the show. I don't know if I can um, pick up any anyone here. My phone not coming up right yet with Facebook. But... All right, later on in the show, I will shout out to those who are there right now. So let me, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. What are we going to do? All right, today, as you know, for the first hour of the, the, the show, we always, I always try, um, on Saturdays, I try. And, and what I want to talk about today is the gospel, the power of God for deliverance for heaven, for all, and the power of God unto salvation. That's what the word of God said. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power, the power of God unto salvation. So, we want to talk about the, what I said, um, the, it's the power of God. The gospel is the power of God. Reproduction. Uh, re reproduce. It's, when you say power, you mean dynamo or dynamite. Right? Reproduce itself. When a dynamite go off, it keep on going off and reproduce itself. Yes. So that's what the, that's what you get. That's how you, that's how you compare the the, um, the, 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 um, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when the gospel is preached, it reproduces itself. Reproduce God. That soul that is that is converted, 
When I got saved, I tell my friends about it. I tell my family about it. And they want to know about the, um, the God, that, 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 what is this new thing. And by telling them about this new thing, then they will come too. So that's how you see, when you said the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. It reproduces itself. The gospel reproduces itself continuously, reproducing itself. What we are doing here right now and reaching millions of people around the world, it reproducing that, that people being aware of the power of God and get deeper into it and accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, Lord and Savior, and being saved. So the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of power unto salvation. All right. And, and it's according to Romans 10 and you know Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10. You know, he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you are saved. For with the mouth, confession, with the heart. You believe, you know, unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So that's so that's you know, once you confess Jesus Christ as your personal savior and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you are saved. You become part of the kingdom of God. You become a new person, the new birth. For the, the what um, um, Second Corinthians five and verse seventeen said, you know, bringing you into Jesus Christ. It, it um, first Second Corinthians um, five and verse seventeen said, when you be in Christ, you are a new creation, a new person. You become a new person, not a new person per se. You re, there's a, you know you go back in your mother womb and birth and and, and rebirth. But your spirit, your spirit is is a is a re rebirth, in the sense that you know it take on the Jesus Christ Himself. You shift ownership, as I I, I talk about it before. You shift ownership. Jesus Christ is your owner now. When you confess that Jesus, you are my Lord, that means you tell Him that you own me. I belongs to you. And when you shift ownership, you become a new person. Because Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, cleanse you from all your sin. You, we could not do it of ourselves. No matter how we try, we couldn't do it but the blood. When you confess Jesus Christ, that blood that shed on Calvary, more than 2,000 years ago, still stands, still flows, still powerful, still cleansed, still delivered, still in its work. And it's the power of salvation and to, it's the power of God unto salvation. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, let me I'm right, I'm right. I said bring, bring one into something to Jesus Christ and transform him he, he him or her in unto a new person as per the spirit. Is being transformed into the spirit of Jesus as you as your spirit being transformed into the spirit of Jesus Christ. Because when you got saved, when you confess Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that you God has raised him from the dead, your spirit is transformed into the spirit of Jesus Christ. And Jesus take your spirit and give you or you and high his spirit. So now his spirit is indwell in us. And we, that's how we become a new creature. That spirit that is in us now is going to work from inside out. Inside out. So our, our attitude is going to change. Our mannerism is going to change. And things like that. Your friends might, your friends going to see the difference. Because things that you know you um, the, the things that you used to say, you're not gonna say that no more. The way that you act, you know, the friends will see how you know see the changes. 
in you because they're gonna say something wrong. Cause, you know, we, you know, so that's how that's how the, the, the changes. And don't look for a gradual, you know, a, 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 a one hundred and three in, in one hundred and eighty eighty degree change because it's the spirit that change. The physical man, the spirit now from work from within side of you, changing the, the physical man. Your taste is different now. You, you know, if there was a, a person who smoked, you don't, you know, after a while, you don't want to smoke no more. You don't have the taste for cigarette no more. If you're a person who drink, after a while, you don't, you know, you don't have the taste for alcohol no more because the spirit is working inside. But that spirit inside, when you get that spirit, you just don't get that spirit and make it stay there. Damn, man. You have to start, you, there's a part of us that we have to do. We have to start to read the word of God. And not only read the word of God, but align yourself with and, uh, in, a, in a local church where you can get the teaching. Because when you become a child, when you become a newborn Christian, you're like a child. So you need the teaching and the guidance. Because when a person, when a, when a woman have a, you give birth to a child, she don't just put that child aside and just give it food and say, go and eat. No, they have, they have to nurture that child. Sometimes that ch child needs to be held need to be you know nurtured and you know and, and, and talk, you know talk to and teach various different things and mannerism so that's how it it, it 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 um behooves us when we got saved to you know align ourselves with a local church that we can be um teach and guide and and, and nurtured into a full-fledged christian a christ-like person who walk and follow the in the footstep of Christ, true is word. Okay, you can you cannot, you know, walk in the footstep of Christ unless you read His word. You have to dig into His word, read His word, you know, and, and get under somebody who teach the word the way, and you know, and will answer question that you have. Let me be ready to answer question correctly and give you the truth. Don't just give you a partial truth, but give you the truth, and don't try to um. You have a lot of different, you know, you have to be careful out there in this world today. You have gone at the people who fall for, you know, in some, you know, these people who so say they, 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 the ministers and things like that, and they're just out for heart, for various different ulterior um, um, motive. And you have to stay, you have to watch out for them. And the way you watch out for them, through the word of God, and, you know, Dig into the spirit and ask God to give it the spirit to discern spirit and to you know when you know because you can discern the spirit of a man and only the spirit can you know you can discern that spirit to know that he's not right. Sometimes you can you can figure them out without even the spirit because them talk, they, they, just the conversation can let you know that listen he's not right. You're talking about me, but he's not right. So that's how it goes. So we're talking about here what we're talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power of God to salvation. All right. So this is how it goes. So this is what we're talking about. Get in. Get in there. 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 I don't think I can finish this today because let me see where we are now. 29, 629, 6, uh, 429. So all right. Okay. And, you know, 17, we're still at 17, we're still at 17, we're talking about um, being a new creature, a new person in Christ. And I want to go back and say, listen, I'm still in the, the mode of struggling in, with a mindset, with the mindset. Because, I, you know, I, I, I might have to admit that being doctrinated for years... About you know the 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 um the, the about Jesus Christ that you know Christ is white and the, it it um when I'm start when I start to dig into the Bible and dig into the truth about it it kind of you know set me about because I'm, ladies and gentlemen I'm going to let you know when you read in the Word of God always set your mindset certain way your mind have to set certain way have a kingdom mindset. Have a spiritual mindset and have a mindset that these characters in the Bible look like you. 
Remember that. They look like you. You understand? Look like you. You have to do that. The first thing, because let me tell you, let me tell you, you know, for, for a long time, you know, you know, it, when you start to read this character, it just it pop up in your head, they, they, you know, because of what they, they, what they talk about all these years, these, these figures that you see and, and, and pictures and even in the Bible, you, they have pictures, the one, one page of, there's a picture of different people and you never see nobody look like you in those pictures. And he said, how oh, they want me to um, to serve, to, to, to be part of this. And I don't see nobody in here look like me. Everybody that showed them, it looked like, you know, of European descent. You mean to tell me, you know, and then you start to realize that the Bible talk about, you know, you know, Africa and they talk about the Middle East and, and, and I know the people in those areas. I don't, they don't look like no African in, in like no um, European descent. They look, they look um, dark skinned. You know, and then I start to um, think, and then I start to do my research. My, I start to do my my full research, and start to dig, and not only dig in the Bible, because in the Bible you're not gonna find it. Because I want to remind you that in the Bible, the Bible don't talk about black and white. Our I talk about you know Hispanic or Indian or Chinese. The Bible don't talk about that. The Bible only recognizes a man by three things, by three, three, three work, three things. His ethnic background, his nationality, and his lineage. That's it. It recognizes, it, when you talk about, you talk about you, either your lineage, your lineage is where you, where you come, your, 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 your father, and your father, father, father. Or you talk about your nationality, which is where the location of, of the location where you're from, or your tribe, which is you know your 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 your, your, your social your community, your, your social you know community. So this is what that's 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 what that's how it works. But we human take the, the word of God and we twist it around and change it around to suit their agenda, their way of life and how they want to because when God created you created you and I, God didn't create you and I to be to be subject to be to be subject to to be dominated by 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 other person. No. When God created us, he said, give us power to dominate, but not to dominate your brother and your sister, to dominate his creation, which is the bird, the beast, whatever, the, the, the trees and those things, the animals, not human being. You don't dominate human being. Human being belongs to God. Every human being belongs to God. God is our supreme being. No human is your supreme being. God is your supreme being. The animals, the birds, the fishes in the sea, up to the, 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 the moon and the stars and the sun and all the planets. God gave us that so we must dominate it, his creation. Take dominion. Remember in the Bible when Joshua asked the sun to stand still? Yes, because God gave us the power. The power to deal with them. You see, right now, in you know, your man can go to the moon and do all different things because God gave us that authority to take to dominate, but not to dominate human being. What if, whoever you see dominate human being, it's illegal in God's sight. It's an abomination to God to to dominate and to want to you know. Overpower people and be in somebody position, in a person be your position. So let me tell you, there is. That's why you have to have a mindset when you when you read in the Bible. Not only when you read in the Bible, but you have a mindset when you believe in the Word of God. Cause you will get messed up in the mind. After a while, you will be, you know, looking on some people, certain people, and feel that they are special more than you. But God, there's no you, big high, and little you in God. Every person is the same thing. God look upon us the same way. If we trust him, if we believe him, 
If we walk according to his will, he will bless us and he will protect us. Each one of us, God created, assigned an angel. We have an angel assigned to us. Protection over us, covering us each day, watching over us each day. You understand? So, if you, if, 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 don't let no one tell you, read the word, of, I'll tell you, read the word of God for yourself. Even if you're a Christian and you're assigned to a local church, they teach the word and they, they preach the word and they live by the word. Read the word of God for yourself. Don't be led blind. Don't be led blind. Because when you when you, you are led blind, you can, there's a lot of things, because you, know, you have a lot of fanatics out there. And not only, there's a lot of people get church hurt. Being led blind, being led blind and then let down and then, you know, you get hurt because, you know, you, you've been so taken up with this person that you're not even realizing they're letting, let, leading you down the wrong path. So whatever they tell you, do the research for yourself. Check it out. Double check it and make sure it's right and make sure it's true what they're telling you. You know, learn to read the Bible and in practice, if you if you don't know to read the Bible, even probably you know you know go to a a, a, a local Bible school or something like that. But d learn the techniques of reading the Bible. You can go online to on um, you know you have so much video online where it will teach you how to read the Bible and how to take. But you have to be careful on the online as also. But do something. Don't just sit down as a blind Christian. Oh, I'm saved and I'm going to church and I'm doing it. Check it out for yourself. Check it out for yourself. Dig in. Do the digging for yourself. You know, do your private reading of the Bible. And, and the word of God, God said, if you ask of him anything, he will give it to you. So if you want to say, go to God and say, God, I love your son. I just accept him as my personal savior. And I want to live for you. So how can you, te uh, can you teach me? Because Jesus tell it, Jesus said it. He said he will send another comforter. In in St. John's 14, read St. John's 14 until he said he will send another comforter that will bring back things, will teach you all things and bring back things to your remembrance. So if we ask God, and Jesus even said it again, said anything that you want, ask God. And he will. Ask anything you want, ask God in my name. Jesus gave us a blank check. He said, if you want something, just go to God and tell him, me tell you, me send you. That's, not def that's definitely what he's saying. I'm just paraphrasing. Just go to God and tell him, say, me send you. My name is good with God. Je that's what Jesus t pr practically telling me, that my name is good with God. If you go to God and tell him and believe in your heart, then it will be done. You know, so this is how it goes. So check it out for yourself. And we talk, we, we still on the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of salvation. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of salvation. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, believe in your heart that God have raised him from the dead. He's your Lord and savior and God have raised him from the dead. You are saved. You go on to start reading the word of God, believe and trust in the, Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Dedicate your life to Jesus Christ. Walk uprightly, circumspectly, and God will bless you. God will spread, will give you blessing. You will never, ever be able to have room to receive. And that's what he said when you when you accept Jesus Christ, you become a new creature, a new man, new person, new desire, new way of living, new thinking, new mindset, new friends after a while. Because you know, if your friend if your friend is a friend, he will stick around and even want to follow you. But if he's if he you say it's, he might you might lose that friend, but you will gain a friend because you are a part of a kingdom now. You're not part of a one of a you know, you're part of a kingdom. 
Yes, the kingdom of God. And I want to remind you that a kingdom, a person, you cannot be part of a kingdom. You have to be born in a kingdom. That's why when you accept Jesus Christ, that's why when um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 said, you become a new creature. You've been born again. You've been born again. You are born in the kingdom of heaven. You are born in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You are born in the kingdom of God. You are a kingdom person now, having a kingdom mindset. That means that every Christian in the world now is your brother and sister. Every child of God in the world is your brother and sister. So you're not alone no more. You have millions and millions of and thousands of brothers and sisters all around the world. And probably next door. So, you know, you'll be, you'll be all right. So, any man in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. All right? Yes. That's the word of God. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. All right. God has made Jesus Christ. We are, we are the righteousness. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you become the righteousness of God in, G, in true Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ reconciled you unto God. God gave you the spirit or the ministry, as the word of God said. The ministry of reconciliation so now you are reconciled to god we were cut off from god because of our sinful nature and not any fault of ours but the fault of our forefather adam who disobeyed god and end up soul is birthright after satan and send us into servitude to satan you understand so god when jesus came jesus came and ransom us or redeem us with his blood no we are redeemed we are his righteousness and what this means is become the righteousness of god mean when god look upon us when we come to god and when god look upon us he don't see us he see the blood of his son jesus christ because we are redeemed soul with the by the blood of jesus christ that's why i said we are the righteousness of god in Christ Jesus. When we come into the presence of God, God don't see us per se because if God look upon us, we are sinners saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. God cannot look upon sin. So the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ cover our sin. Jesus Christ becomes sin for us that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Father God, we thank you for this precious, for your precious word. Out there in Cyberland, kingdom people, my kingdom brother and sister, thank you for tuning in. I hope I said something that will inspire you to probably do the same thing to a, a sister or to a neighbor, to a friend, to a co-worker, or inspired you to submit to accept jesus christ as your personal savior or even just to you know take an interest never you're never interested in the word of god you're never interested in um, um looking into the word of god but because of what i said you will find more interest to start to read the word whatever you get out of this don't make it waste. Use it. Use it. Use it. It is a wonderful thing to live for God. I'm not going to say it's an easy road because there is testings and trial. But what the word of God said, there is no temptation. Take you among man that, you know, that he will not provide a way of escape. God provide the escape for everything. When when you accept Jesus Christ, you don't leave out in, in Jesus don't leave you out there and by yourself. He's there every step of the way to protect you. You have to just call unto him. The Father God said, 
My eyes are upon the righteous and my ears are hoping unto their cry. Remember what I said. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When we accept Jesus Christ our Pope, as our personal Savior, we become the righteousness of God. We reconcile to God. We are God's children. We become part of the kingdom of God. We are Christ-like. So do what they call it. When they say we are Christian, it means we are Christ-like. We, we are follower of Jesus Christ. So all we all we gotta know about Jesus Christ. Because right now, Jesus Christ is not here where we can see his lifestyle and see how we live to follow him. So the only way we can follow him is through his word. So you have to get into the Bible. Get into the word, into the Holy Bible. You know, there are so many, you know, different um translation out there. Pick a translation that you know, you like, you know, I would advise to pick a, you know, translation that of modern English because some people have it, find it hard to, um, to understand the, the, the um, especially the King James Version with the various different lingua, old time ling lingua. But if you get a Bible that of the modern English, it will be probably more relevant to you. And, you know, especially if you're a young person, you know, you know probably, you know, teenager to the, you know, in your twenties or in your thirties, you want something where you, you know, where you relevant, language that relevant. So pick a word like the NIV Bible translation or the New English um, translation as a way. Kind of give you a more relevant reading. Study it, read it, you understand? And when you're reading it for the first, if you're reading for the first time, it's not going to make sense, but continue to read and pray to God before you read. Just, you know, just, you know, say a short prayer, Father, I'm getting ready to read your word. Can you give me, you know, help me to understand, touch my mind, my heart, and help me to understand. And he will, because let me tell you, God ready. It is not God, it's not the will of God for any to be perished. God set up salvation. Salvation is open to us. It's, it's, it's like somebody, it's like a rich person give you a blank check and say to write any figure on it and go cash it and you put it down. That's how God, that's how salvation is for us. God, salvation is open to everyone. Everyone. No, whether you're white, black, doesn't matter. Salvation is open to everyone, but it's up to you. God not going to force you and say, come take it. You have to take that, come and take it for yourself. This is DJ Creed coming to you. I'm just telling you what I was thinking. I'm just speaking out loud what I was thinking. And, you know, I'm going to have a new segment on Saturdays what they call The Well. The Well. Or the, no, not, not The Well. I, I, sorry, sorry. Standpipe. That's what you're going to name. Standpipe. All right, standpipe. You're gonna name standpipe, and I'm gonna standpipe is a whole is a word that I use when I was being a, with that you know use a lot, lot of time when in um in, when I was growing up in the Caribbean in Jamaica. Standpipe. You know, a district used to have one pipe, one standpipe, and everybody in go there to get get water. And at that standpipe, you get, you know, sometimes information is passed down. Because you just like when people used to, in, in the old days, when people used to go to the well, various different people, and right at that well, information is passed, passed by each other. Because communication, you come there, you start to talk to your friend, and that's how it goes. So this is why we're going to tell, standpipe. And that's what it's going to be like, yeah, standpipe. Standpipe, you know, and it's going to be just a metaphor, just to say that. Your information going to come right there. And I think I want to create, I'm going to create a page on the, on the website and start to, and, 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 and label it Standpipe. And start to put some information there and start to, you know, I, 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 I'm not farm, I, listen, the idea just come up to me and this segment going to call Standpipe. And then I'm, well, I'm going to make it burst and blossom and bloom. Thank you for, for, for tuning in. We're going to play, play some foot stamping by the rocking and soul story music.
Yes, yes, yes. But for the next 10 minutes, I want to play a little excerpt. I'm going to go back again into, I have another little um, excerpt of the president of Ghana addressing um, some delegates. And I want you to listen to it. You know, why I'm really doing this is, I, I do, um, I listen to a lot of, I, I'm big on Africa because I feel Africa is at the point where they should unite right now and pool their resources together and use it, you know, and, and, and pool their resources. Their, not only their resources in the land, but also the, 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 the people and the, the knowledge and their skills. Pool it together as one nation. Just as Europe do, just as the United States do. Pool, because Africa is a, a bigger landmass. More people and potential, great, great potential for the future. Pull it together and, and don't sit around and let and depend on the West to be. And, and, and this is one of the things that, you know, that's why I really love this. This, um, this excerpt, this um, um, a speech here from, from the president of um, Afghana. So I'm going to. Um, play a little excerpt from it. That's why I love it because you know, it's it, 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 it just so right on. It's so right on. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Welcome to the Great African Leadership Series where we feature great inspirational speeches and quotes from African leaders. I recognize the significance of the moment as being the first leader from the continent to speak at this meeting. I hope that my country, Ghana, and indeed the African continent, will not be judged by any deficiencies of mine. These, those are purely personal to me and not at all representative. Nonetheless, I believe the time has come for a new form of partnership between Ghana and the United States of America. We are not disclaiming aid, but we do want to discard a mindset of dependency. It is unhealthy, both for the giver and the receiver. We want our relations with the United States to be characterized by a substantial increase in trade and investment cooperation. This is the way to develop healthy relations between our two countries and thereby strengthen our economies and raise the living standards of our two peoples. Honorable governors, I urge you not to ignore our continent. Many people say that this is the Asian century, but I believe strongly that this can be Africa's century. Our growth in 2015 was second only to that of Asia. According to the World Bank, six of the world's 10 fastest growing economies this year are in Africa. We're rich in natural resources and in possession of nearly 30% of the Earth's remaining mineral resources. We have a vibrant young population and those who still have important security challenges we are more at peace than before, despite the distressing ev events in DR Congo, leading to the displacement of hundreds of thousands of innocent people. The African Union has to rise to the occasion and mobilize the global community to find a peaceful democratic outcome to the crisis in DR Congo. We now see the beginnings of meaningful intra-regional intra trade which is about to be given an institutional framework by the historic decision of the African Union to bring into being on 21st March 2018 the continental free trade area. In my own region of ECOWAS, for the first time since its establishment, all 15 member countries have democratically elected governments, which gives us a great opportunity to prosecute vigorously the agenda of regional integration, not just with words, 
but with concrete regional projects that will benefit our populations. This is the time to look at Africa. Yes, it is disheartening to find that African youths do not see a future in their respective countries and are willing to cross the Sahara Desert on foot and drown in the Mediterranean Sea in a desperate bid to reach the mirage of a better life in Europe. With the majority of African economies dependent on the production and export of raw materials, who can blame them for wanting to leave? These economies cannot produce wealth and prosperity for the masses on the continent. It therefore drives the determination to seek a much better standard of living out of Africa, thereby fueling the refugees and the numerous counts of illegal migration. The large waves of migrations into the United States from Ireland and Italy in the 19th century has completely subsided because the economies of those, two, of those two countries are working properly. We in Africa cannot continue traveling the worn path of limited success of being exporters of raw materials. Our problems require that we think outside of the box our, train, our thinking and approach to solving problems must be different from the thinking and approach that brought about the problems in the first place. The only way to ensuring prosperity for Africa and jobs for our young populations is through value addition activities in a transformed and diversified modern economy in which we take full advantage of the digital revolution. In other words, the industrial development of our continent. And we are determined to ensure the realization of this so that our young people can stay and devote their great energies to the building of a great Africa. It is worth recounting at this juncture the inspiring words of the American politician, William Jennings Bryan, that, and I quote, destiny is not a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved." Unquote. There are many amongst us who cannot accept that it is only Asians who can engineer in a generation their transition from poverty to prosperity. We are determined to do that in our generation in Ghana, on the continent, and ensure that succeeding generations will be neither victims nor pawns of the global order. This will serve as the impetus for reshaping the continent and charting a new path of growth and development in freedom, which will lift the long-suffering African masses out of poverty the realms of prosperity and dignified existence. In conclusion, let me reaffirm the commitment of my government in Ghana in standing shoulder to shoulder with the United States in the promotion of human rights on the African continent and across the globe. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the United States in the rejection of terrorism as a legitimate means of resolving political disputes. We appreciate the courageous commitment and the lead role being played in the fight against terrorism by the United States in several parts of the world, including the Sahel region of West Africa. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the United States in attempting to develop our economies to provide opportunities for its citizens to fulfill their aspirations, especially the youth. We stand ready to renew and deepen our relations with the United States of America for the, prosper, for, for the progress and prosperity of our two peoples. May God bless us all and the peoples of the United States of America and Ghana. I thank you for your attention and wish you a fruitful day.